Oh. Oh. Okay. Speria Idalius, Regal Frillary. Let's see. The, the data is on the envelope. Oh, he did send me a female. Okay. Female is in paper, though. So I'm going to have to mount this one. There we go. Look at that. Well, she's in the paper. She's dry. Uh, I am going to put her in my relaxing chamber. I call it my relaxing chamber. All right, let's see. Let's get my rehydration chamber out. This thing's heavy because it's full of water. All right. Make sure there is there water in there? Oh, there's no water in there. I gotta put some water in there. All right, guys, relaxing your butterflies. And I use the word relaxing because it's fun. Um, the best way to do it, get some hot water because hot water molecules evaporate a lot faster than cold water molecules because there's a lot more energy. So I'm getting the, the water warm and good hot water. My water heater works well. All right. A lot of times I'll even put it in the microwave or, or put it, boil it so it's steaming. You might not have to do that here. So... I have a uh, fish tank gravel underneath and I put some um, paper towel and then I just put my my hot water here in, I might put a little bit more. It's been a while since I've used this thing. So, okay, now I'll put a piece of styrofoam on top and the purpose for that is to keep your specimens from falling into the water. We don't want them actually to get wet. Okay, now we are Okay. There's the big female Regal Fertility, guys. What a beautiful, beautiful butterfly that is. What a beauty. In fact, that might make a good thumbnail. Let's see. Always pick up your specimens with tweezers. You don't want your greasy paws to take scales off. And there it is, guys. We're going to mount our Regal Fertility female. We're going to put her in our rehydration chamber would be the appropriate term for i call it the relaxing chamber because they need to relax uh, but we'll let this girl sit in here we'll give her a cover and probably takes a good 24 hours uh to get the 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 moisture will get into the muscles of the butterfly and make them pliable enough to actually put on a spreading board and then we'll it's been now about two days since we put our Regal Fertility in our rehydration chamber before we take her out and, and mount her on the spreading board. Uh, I just wanted to share with you a few of the items that we're using uh, in the video. So guys, we got our, our rehydration chamber, which is nothing more than a, well, I have a round uh, Tupperware container with fish gravel on the bottom and a piece of styrofoam on top. I've got a, a spreading board with the groove that is already predetermined because this is the right size groove where the body of the butterfly just barely fits inside the groove because it needs to be the right size to prevent the butterfly from spinning on the pin. I've got my, uh, my, my trusty block here with all my different pins. I've got my black enamel insect pins that I use for the putting the the pin through the thorax and then the silver pins, the stainless steel pins for using for mounting the butterfly. I've got my protum block, which I'll use to put the butterfly and the label on right size or the right height on the pin, make it look nice and uniform. And then I've got 
just two strips of cardstock paper that we're going to use uh, to cover the wings of the butterfly. So let's get started. We're going to, first of all, open up the container here and just see how our specimen looks. And looks good, guys. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the wings to be pliable. This specimen was very dry when it came in the mail and the wings were very, uh, you, you couldn't do this without breaking the wings. So you have to re rehydrate it first. The, once they're dry, guys, the butterflies, it's a little stiff. So we have a little trick for that on how to loosen up these wings. Uh, I'm gonna show that to you in a minute, but this is ready to go, guys. So what we're gonna do um, we're going to handle our butterfly with a pair of forceps. We we'll take it out of the rehydration chamber. Put the lid back on. Before we mount our butterfly, what we're going to do is we are going to use an X-Acto knife. And we are going to show you a little trick there. I have other videos that talk about this in detail, but guys, we're, we're going to show you a little trick on how to loosen up your butterfly wings so that it's easy to mount. Uh, and so this is just an X-Acto knife, not a big deal. And I've used this thousands and thousands of times. I've never changed the blade. You don't need to change the blade, but what we're going to do is we're going to sever a few of the tendons on the thorax of the specimen and there's a tendon right underneath the vein here on the behind wing done there's also a tendon right here underneath the vein the main vein on the fore wing and you can hear the crunch when you when you sever that tendon you can hear the crunch and so you don't want to cut too deep it's right on the thorax right where this vein meets the thorax on the hind wing and same thing on the fore wing and you sever those tendons and now these wings will move a lot more easy so i flip it over do the th same thing on this side there it is there it is all right now the specimen is going to be much more pliable now that those tendons have been severed, look at that beauty. That is a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. This is a little embarrassing, but this butterfly has been in this rehydration chamber for a couple days. And this is actually, I left it on in a little too long because I want to show you something that happens. And this is, this is not good. The, the, the abdomen of the butterfly, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. The abdomen of the butterfly actually has mold starting to grow on it. I left it in like two and a half days and that's too long guys. It's, you don't wanna leave them in the rehydration chamber that long. Uh, I ran out of chlorocresol, which is an, uh, an agent, an anti-mildew agent that you can put these crystals inside of your rehydration chamber that keeps your specimens from molding. So you can look up chlorocresol. We used to get it from BioQuip before they went out of business. I don't know where to get it now, so I have to look that up. But that's my bad. I should not have left the specimen that long, but we can, it's, it's not, it's very salvageable. So we are just going to scrape some of the mildew off and, and uh, deal with that that way. So that's my bad, guys. That's uh, kind of a rookie mistake on my part.